Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and continuing the discussion. So, seventh property is I believe now. Seventh, right? Seventh or sixth, whatever it is. The property of differentiation. Differentiation and I believe the spelling is right. Now what do we have is if x of t is a signal has Fourier coefficients a k. Now if I take the derivative of it. If the derivative of x of t. What are the Fourier coefficients of this particular signal now? So. What do we have is, where is the proof? Okay, I have done it over here. Considering again the what? Uh, the synthesis equation. So if you take the derivative of your x of t, you have to take the derivative of both sides of that equation. So summation I would write outside directly. Uh, that is k running from a negative infinity to positive infinity. Uh, then I would write now the derivative of what? A k exponential of j k omega naught t now again have a look a k does not have anything to do with the exponential so i would get it outside and the derivative of exponential would get you what this thing would come into the multiplication factor so i would have what i would have it like this a summation k running from negative infinity to positive infinity right and then what do you have a k a k yes and then this is multiplied with this thing the derivative now so this is multiplied with j k omega naught t and what do you have j k oh no 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 this is a mistake this no this thing is coming down so you have a j k omega naught and you have the exponential of j k omega naught t so uh, what happens is that you have what you have what uh, x of t had the Fourier coefficients what a k into exponential j k omega naught t so which means now the Fourier coefficients are being multiplied with j k omega naught so which means that now your Fourier coefficient for the derivative would be multiplied with j k omega naught the previous Fourier coefficients a k is that fine so this I talked for the first order if you have an nth order for the second order you would have this multiplied with a squared of a k if you have an nth order uh, the nth differentiation of x of t this word uh, the Fourier series would be what this would be multiplied with j k omega naught to the power n the previous Fourier coefficients a k fine Property number eight. Property number eight is integration. Integration. X of t has Fourier coefficient a k. If this is integrated till a finite value t x of t with respect to t, what would be the uh, integration? What would now be the Fourier new Fourier coefficient? So you know the differentiation and integration are opposite in nature. So over there, if you have multiplication j k omega naught over here, you have a division. But of course, we would have to prove it. Fine. So again, uh, you know, considering the synthesis equation, and now let's say I take x of tau d tau. This is integrative from negative infinity to t. Fine. So what would be the case? Negative infinity to t. Uh, summation. K running from negative infinity to positive infinity. A k exponential of j k omega naught t. Fine. So this I have taken the integration on both hand sides. Now what do I have is the integration uh, let's say I take the summation outside and also a k outside so uh, what do you have is the summation is taken outside because it does not have anything to do with the integration a k does not have anything to do the integration is like this yes okay 
where is it yes you can take it till a positive infinity whatever it is the the integration is of j k omega naught t so what would now the integration imply that this thing would be divided so now what do you have is that the integration of x of tau d tau would be equal to uh, summation k running from negative infinity to positive a k what do you have is you have the same term exponential of j k omega naught t and this would be divided by j k omega naught so i have a look this j k omega naught i can take outside so what did i understand from here is that for x of t my signal my Fourier coefficients were till here a k exponential of this thing the the, in, uh, the 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 extra term is divided so if now i take the integration of my signal so which means that i have to divide the given fourier coefficients by jk omega naught this is the property of integration the ninth is let's say uh what do you do multiplication or convolution let's say we do convolution first let's say we do convolution first number nine is convolution in time domain right so if you have uh, let me you know write that if i have a signal that i uh, x1 is my first signal it has fourier coefficients a1 k x2 is my next signal i have the Fourier coefficient a 2k if now the question is if I can evolve x1 of t convolved with x2 of t what would be the Fourier coefficients of this particular case so let me represent you know that coefficients by an a k dash these would be equal to 1 upon t integration over t what would be uh, case x of t is now what my x of t is now the convolution of x1 of t and x2 of t and 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 what is the next thing exponential of negative j k omega naught t dt is that clear till here now what do i have is that i would make the convolution i would replace the convolution so if i have one upon t is this one the integration limit let's say zero to take i am considering it fine and then what is the convolution so the convolution is let's say in the brackets you have an x1 of tau i am keeping constant you have an x2 of t minus tau right this is with respect to tau d tau the integration is from negative infinity to positive infinity this is you are this convolution term and uh, exponential of negative j k omega naught t integrated with respect to t is that fine but have a look we are uh, doing what these things we are all doing over one period so i can simply replace this by a single period let's say from zero to t right so this particular convolution is known as the periodic convolution periodic convolution now we move into the next steps well let's say we multiply it with an exponential of jk omega naught t the next step is I multiply and divide. So let me multiply and divide in the same step and you do it in the next step by a jk omega naught t is multiplied and similarly it's divided by an exponential of jk omega naught t and you have the dt where you have the dt over here and this is what it is. Fine now in the next step i could write what that my a k dash the new Fourier coefficients would be equal to let's say i take this one over t one over t right integration over t x one these are all in multiplication now right so i could take this uh with respect to what uh 
let's say x1 of tau i take first so i take uh, the integration from 0 to t i take x1 of tau then what do you have you have an exponential of negative j k omega naught t tau tau i multiplied it with a tau right so i have an exponential of negative j k omega naught tau with respect to tau and this i have multiplied with tau fine so this particular thing x1 of tau will come with this so this goes upward this becomes negative tau right so this is the first term the second is this integration again so one integration was this one the next would be let's say uh, again from 0 to t right what happens now you have remaining x2 of t minus tau and that particular thing so exponential of negative j k omega naught t minus tau t minus tau right yes t minus tau t minus tau and this would have this d tau with it now what they have done is that they have uh, changed the limits let's say t minus tau is equal to alpha t minus tau is equal to alpha so a small t would imply a small alpha dt would apply a small alpha isn't it like this it is so if t is equal to 0 now if t is equal to 0 this implies what that alpha is equal to minus of tau right alpha is equal to minus of tau and similarly when t is equal to t naught when t is equal to t naught alpha is equal to t naught minus t t naught minus t so these were the limits that i'm talking about and now you would understand it when i write uh, the next step so what do you have is let me remove this first okay so now what do you have is my a k dash would be equal to one upon t naught the integration is from 0 to t naught you know this 1 upon t the integration over one period 0 to t you have an x1 of tau exponential of negative j k omega naught tau d tau so this is you have one term and you could see that these are the Fourier coefficient this we have obtained over here directly these are the Fourier coefficient of the first signal that is they are a1 uh, a1 of k are these things right now in the second case what do i have is t minus tau was replaced by an alpha so you have an integration you have x2 of alpha right an exponential of negative jk so t minus tau was again alpha exponential of negative jk omega naught alpha fine and d tau was replaced by a d alpha so you have a d alpha over here the limits of the integration was uh, from minus tau to 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 what from minus tau to t naught t naught minus tau right t naught minus uh, tau these were the limits right now what do you have it if you're going if you're getting confused in these limits so if you check the higher minus the lower limit what do you get is you get the same limit of integration the limit of integration is again t naught is equal to one period so if you see that these would be the these would be the Fourier coefficients of the second signal but one upon t is missing so if i multiply with a one upon t and if i divide with a one upon t so which means that this is for x1 this is for x2 the t is external so what do you get is the Fourier coefficients of the convolution would be t times a 1k multiplied a 2k so these are the Fourier coefficient you multiply the Fourier coefficients and multiply it with the time period if the two signals are convolved together fine now the last property let's say the 10th is the multiplication in time 
multiplication. Now what do you have is if you have two signals x1 of t you multiply it with an x2 of t what would be the Fourier coefficients of these particular signals? x1 has coefficient a1 x2 has coefficient a2 what would be the coefficients of the multiplication right let me name x1 as a k x2 as b k so so they have written what x1 has Fourier coefficients a k x2 has Fourier coefficients b k now we will deal with the product so x1 would be represented as what k running from a negative infinity to positive infinity a k exponential of 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 j k omega naught t right similarly x2 of t is the same thing again k running from negative infinity to positive a k exponential of j k omega naught t now what they have done is so let me remove the board first now what they have done is they have replaced they have replaced the independent variables let's say over here they have replaced k by n so what do you have is x1 of t is equal to the summation n running from negative infinity to positive a n exponential of j n omega naught t fine similarly over here let's say replacing k by m by m so x2 of t would be summation m running from negative infinity to positive uh, a m exponential of j m omega naught t and i believe till here it's clear fine so now i can write the product of the two signals if i multiply x1 of t with x2 of t what do i get so let me write the summations together first i would write that m is running from negative infinity to positive infinity then i would write the next summation n is running from negative infinity to positive infinity and this is bm right this is bm so you have an a n would be multiplied with b m right in the exponential you would have m plus n common j m plus n omega naught t this is what you get from the multiplication i hope i am clear i am doing it in a little speed because i'm in a little hurry so i'm sorry and also i'm a little tired as well and i've written this for myself so that's why maybe as well so now m plus n we have let this m plus n be now back my independent variable k if m plus n is equal to k this implies that m is equal to k minus n right m is equal to k minus n so means that if m tends to negative infinity this implies k also tends to negative infinity and if m tends to positive infinity this also implies that k also tends to positive infinity right so what can i do is what can i do is that i can write over here that my x1 of t multiplied with x2 of t this would result in what this would result in m negative infinity positive so i could write in this place k running from negative infinity to positive infinity right the n running from negative infinity to positive infinity remains as it is right a n is as it is for b for m what i have got now k minus n fine and an exponential of j k omega naught t j n omega naught t j n omega naught t so if you see if you see what do we have k running from negative infinity to positive or n running or whatever so these two summations you have to multiply this with your original signal and then the summation so what is my signal in this particular case if you see we have seen this in a great detail yes yes this is the discrete time convolution 
This is the discrete time convolution of the two signals that is A N and B N. So this was the discrete time convolution. These are the Fourier coefficients. And if you take the discrete time convolution, you give you multiply it with this. So originally, originally x of t had Fourier coefficient a k if this was multiplied with exponential term. Now in this particular case, if you are multiplying this and m plus n is equal to k so this is k right this i wrote properly this was k because this is also k fine so now if you have the summation as it is the multiplication as it is so the Fourier coefficients only has changed and now the Fourier coefficients are the discrete time convolution and let me write it down that in this particular case what do you have is uh, that if x1 had coefficient a1 and these had a k and these had b k so this would multiply that a k is convolved with b k so if you multiply the signals in time domain the Fourier coefficients with get convolved together now if you have a question is that this was a continuous time multiplication we have a discrete time convolution why is that so you know it very well that the Fourier coefficients representations are discrete the 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 Laplace transform is discrete in nature that's all about today that's all about the properties of continuous time Fourier series see you in the next lecture with I don't know whatever the topic is most probably the Parseval's relation till then take care of yourself and everyone around you and do remember me in your prayers and do subscribe to the channel goodbye